Hello subscribers and non-subscribers and welcome back to Let's Play uh, Rule the Waves 2 as the US. So we are currently on the cusp of another war with the British. I'm hoping to avoid that because I don't really wish to go to war with the British again. So let's see. Uh, we have money. Go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and queue up a couple more Wyomings. Those are going to take quite a while to get built, so we're going to go ahead and spend some extra to accelerate them down to 28 months as opposed to 31. It's not massive savings, but you know what, it's something. Um, torpedoes do more damage, wonderful. Fancy new Corvettes, I see. but they're not really fancy. Let's go ahead and queue up a whole bunch of those. Those shouldn't take amount of time actually 10 months that's fine though Italy wants to extend our security agreement yep let's do that no I'm fine I don't need you to build me a 13th Lake Michigan class Corvette We're not ready for war yet. Let us strengthen the navy and strike later. We are well on our way to understanding small tube boilers. And we just got improved diving gear for our sub. Uh, send a note suggesting they reduce their stance in the interest of peace and stability. They react badly to my note. Germany, or not Germany, Japan wants improved hoists, sure. Now, I could live with a war with Germany, I just want to avoid one with Britain if I can. Box completed, wonderful. No, I don't want another Michigan. Call an international peace conference. Bunch of armor or tech improvement. I just curious to know. Oh, Japan. Okay, good. That decreased tensions with the British. Continue upgrading our dock sizes. Chicago is almost done. And Japan wants to enter a major arm. So one of our major arms manufacturer wants to enter a technology sharing agreement with a company in Japan. Is this advisable? Sure. About to get better stuff. Or explosives. Ah, uh, let's go with Germany. You're asked in an interview which nation you see as the most likely enemy in a future war. What is your answer? Germany. Because, yeah. Okay, so the Chicago's are going to go and be in the Caribbean, which one of them's already in the Caribbean, so... That. Um, the Olympias are slightly better. I'm going to place them in Southeast Asia. Actually, no, I think the plan for the Chicago's was to put one in Central Pacific and one in the North Pacific, just so I'd have something in each of those regions. Or, you know, at least something that can actually fight in those regions. Oh, and the Lake Moors, some of them are starting to become considered outdated. Uh, they'll have to wait a bit for me to actually resolve that right now. And we've got some new research area, which this is for airships, which I don't care for. Um, sure, let's go and send some arms to the rebel forces in the Russian possession 
of Sakhalin. Wherever that is. Is that this region here? No. Ah, that's that region right there. Um, I assume that's the Flusiers and the Bane Bridges that fetch their stuff. I'll wait for all of those to finish and then I'll move them around. Now again, we have some extra money. Go ahead and build more. Do ah. up another Wyoming. Again, accelerate it. Wonderful. So the Bane Bridges, I'm going to send them to Southeast Asia. Lucier's will stay in the Caribbean. Um, the Dales are the new ones, right? Jarvis's are slightly older. Send them to the south to Southeast Asia as well, or do I want to send them to the Caribbean? So I would have eight in Southeast Asia. I'd have ten if I send the Jarvises to the Caribbean as well. Yeah, I'll do that. No, actually, I'm going to send the Bane Bridges to the Caribbean, and I'll put the Jarvises in Southeast Asia. The reason being that I, I figure the vast majority of our fights are going to happen in the North American East Coast and Southeast Asia. So in this area around the Philippines and then on the eastern seaboard of North America. So we'll put basically the older stuff, but still sufficient, in the Caribbean. Um, we're not really going to have anything in Central Pacific and North Pacific. There's just no need to. Intelligence reports said the Russian Navy has a majority of their heavy ships. Okay, great for them. They actually have me beat in terms of dreadnoughts. All the more reason for me to build more dreadnoughts. Uh, send them a note. Russia has notified us that they will put some of their large ships in reserve after conducting their fleet exercises. Well, thank you, Russia. I don't think I had the design documents for the PISA class, so I'll have to look back on this recording to update my uh, spreadsheet. Now, the only reason why Russia said yes is because they realized that I'd be able to beat the crap out of them if they said no. So it's not that surprising that they said yes. Um, we got another Bane Bridge that I'm going to ship to the Caribbean. I thought all of them were done, but evidently that is not the case. And some actually have quite a bit in the Caribbean. Um, I'll probably just make more Dales then. Probably better. Well, no, because we just researched, or not just researched, but if I remember correctly, yeah, shortly after researching 700 ton DDs and designing the Dale, like literally the next turn or the turn after that, we got 900 ton destroyer. So we're actually going to go ahead and design a 900 ton destroyer. Because there's really just no reason to not do that. W. Uh, note to cramped accommodations. Short range. I don't know why you're doing that. I may just need to take a little bit of uh, feed off. There we go. So you'll have a forward and an aft 4-inch gun, three swivel mounts. I am going to actually move funnels. 
Ups. That way you're not uh, overlapping. Um, I do have torpedo defense, but it's a little too heavy to put on a uh, destroyer. The destroyers are just going to rely on not running into enemy torpedoes, basically, is going to be their plan. So this is the Jenkins to go with our Jarvis and our Dale. These take 11 months, which I think is a little bit... Actually, I think that's about the same amount of time that the Dales were taking. I don't recall. Go ahead and design that. How long did a Dale take? 10 months, okay. So yeah, they're... They take a little bit longer than a Dale. And they're not actually that much better. But whatever. After a naval visit by Germany, we are asked by a journalist to comment on the visiting ships. Um, well... Germany has rust buckets. Uh, I outnumber them in dreadnoughts, they outnumber me in battle cruisers because I have literally none. They outnumber me in battleship. Which, those are outdated anyway, so, you know, not that big of a deal. I outnumber them in armored cruisers, light cruisers, destroyers. Not that much larger than them in terms of corvettes, though I do outnumber them in submarines, and I'm building a boatload more submarines as we speak. So, yeah, Germany, you have rust buckets. And we got light cruiser armor configuration. I don't know what that is. Uh, yes, keep supplying the rebels in the Russian possession. I want to build... Uh, 12 Jenkins. Er, they're Jenkins, right? Yes, Jenkins. I'm going to just be getting those confused. I'm just going to note that right now. There's way too many of those. We're going to go ahead and dump high intel onto the Germans now. Still waiting for the uh, Baltimore to arrive in Central Pacific, but it'll arrive there next turn. I do need to start updating my old Lakemore Corvette so that they're not labeled as outdated. Which does increase their maintenance costs. It's not significant for these ships, but it does increase it and, you know, every little bit hurts. So, yeah, we're gonna make sure to update those as soon as we get the opportunity. But I think we're waiting for Corvettes to finish right now, or at least the replacement ones. And Russia beat the Rebel State. And we are at war with Germany. Prize rules, because I don't I want to minimize the risk of sinking enemy ship or um not enemy ships, but neutral ships rather. I think I'm gonna take one of the Wyoming's. Go with the Minnesota. I'm going to move the Minnesota to Southeast Asia for the simple reason that I kind of want to be able to actually use it in a fight and see how well it stacks up. Also, what do I have in terms of ships in Southeast Asia out of curiosity? I... Really? I don't have any battleships there? Did I forget to move my battleships? I did. Yep. I forgot to move the Oklahoma and the Illinois to Southeast Asia, so I don't have any battleships in Southeast Asia. Let's correct that. It's going to take them a little while to get there. But, uh, yeah, we got to do that. So, whoopsie, my fault. Oh, um, I don't, I also, I don't care about naval aviation lighter than air. I care about naval aviation heavier than air. Uh, oh, no. Don't continue. That all these guys to trade protection. 
get a small fight in the Caribbean. They are actually going to give us that. And it is an armored cruiser. The old Brooklyn class Pittsburgh. We'll see how this battle is. It should be okay. Theory. If the game's only giving me an armored cruiser, they are presumably not getting a whole hell of a lot. I was not paying attention to what type of battle this is, though. Which is something I should have paid attention to. You look like you turned around as if you saw something. Unknown ship spotted, there we go. Oh no, you gave them two things. Destroyers. But this is fine. I think the Pittsburgh can take destroyers so long as it doesn't take a torpedo. Oh, they may not actually be destroyers. They might actually be corvettes. Holy crap, this will be even easier. Because corvettes, they have. Okay. Yeah. Oh, they actually have 5 inch guns, which is kind of surprising to be honest. But either way, this should be... Yeah, they're both turning and formation. So these are definitely both Corvettes. I'm just failing to identify the second one. There we go. You have a crappy 3-inch gun forward only. So the Fritz Reuter is the only real threat. And that's only just because it has a 5-inch gun, which in theory actually has some penetration capability, but I don't think it's enough to pen 5.5 inches of belt armor. Now your top speed is 16 and yours is 17, so I should be gaining on you guys, assuming that I am. No, I'm currently actually traveling at only 15 knots. You guys do ever so slightly outrun me right now. Slow down to 14 now for whatever reason. I'm going to tell you to go cruising speed because they are at most going 16. And the Fritz Reuter has taken a couple hits. It's slowing down. Game claims it's sinking, but that's definitely not accurate, and your forward gun is jammed. Fine, you still have your tertiaries and secondaries. There you go. Turret back in action. I noticed your bar here, which is kind of a general health bar but not completely an actual health bar. This isn't a case of when that hits zero, the ship sinks, though. Generally, it does, because typically it doesn't hit zero um, until the ship is actually uh, sunk or sinking. I did notice that there, it was down a little bit when your turret got jammed. I never noticed that being a thing before, but apparently it might be. Now, your chance to hit is... Surprisingly decent, 3.47. I assume this is a combination of... Nope, your crew quality is actually zero, so never mind. I was going to say, you guys might actually be skilled. No, you're not. You guys have no skill whatsoever. Took another hit. It kind of looks like the Fritz Reuter is failing to keep up with the uh, uh, Rostengen class. I'm just going to press C and just let the game keep running rather than just pausing constantly. I'll pause it when I want to, which will namely be when I want to see... Yeah, I'm pretty sure the Fritz Reuter is... Not quite done for, but it, it's taken significant damage. There we go, it's done for now. 
it stopped moving, so it sunk. Uh, okay, turret jammed again, but you managed to get it back up relatively quickly. So it sunk a couple corvettes that for some reason they decided to send at us, so great start to a war. The Oklahoma went into, uh, really, because of condenser problems, that's fine. Oh yes, and Japan and Italy have joined me, so Italy is probably going to attempt to move troops into northern Europe, potentially. I guess it just depends on how many ships they have to spare. But I think they could do it if they really wanted to. There's nothing stopping them. I honestly think they could get away with it. Okay, I think the plan was to send all the Oklahomas to Southeast Asia. They don't really have anything to do with the Illinois. You know what? The Illinois can stay in the Caribbean, I think. And again, I could have sworn there was an option to, like, cancel a move order. But I don't remember what the command is. I'm struggling to figure out what it was, so, yep, that's just a thing. This should be a fairly quick and easy war. Um, I don't, can I invade that? I can. Okay, well, you know, let's go ahead and try and invade the Northern Marianas. This just... why not? They have literally no ships in Southeast Asia. I should be able to at least begin the invasion. There's my subs. The Oklahoma is damaged and interned in a neutral port. Really, Oklahoma? The uncertain margin of superiority. Well, that's and you know it. So, bye-bye to the Oklahoma. It is, for all intents and purposes, considered to be sunk. So, the uh, first ship of its class got interned in a random-ass port somewhere in the Caribbean after having condenser problems and returning to port. I'm assuming they managed to fail their geography and reading of the map and somehow managed to end up in, say, Santo Domingo instead of Porta Prince. I'm not sure if that's what happened, but that's my guess. Yeah, so game says uncertain margin of superiority. That's kind of bull. I have five armored cruisers, two light cruisers, and seven destroyers here in Southeast Asia, compared to their three armored cruisers and one destroyer. So, I mean, I have superiority, technically speaking. It's not significant, and you know, it'll get better once the uh, Minnesota and other ships arrive. We get a convoy attack in the, around the Northern Marianas. We have. Okay, they, they have an estimated two destroyers there, and they uh, they chose to not bother. I don't think I have information on Japan's Kurama, so again, I'm going to have to look through this recording to check the deets on this. With our fleet firmly in control of the waters in Southeast Asia, our troops have invaded the German possession of Northern Marianas. Wonderful. I didn't even have to fight a naval battle. Probably because they actually have no ships now. I don't know what happened to those destroyers, but they pissed off somewhere. I see one destroyer in the South Pacific and 12 destroyers in the Indian Ocean, so it's possible they either both went to the Indian Ocean or one went to the Indian Ocean and one went to the South Pacific after they chose to not give battle. Small engagement in support of land combat around the Northern Marianas. They outnumber me now. Two destroyers unable to take part in battle due to distance to closest base. They do have battleships. and Was it battleships or was it just dreadnoughts? It doesn't really matter. They have bigger shit than I do. 
Um, and I don't really have anything to deal with them. I've got a couple of destroyers, but if I run into those dreadnoughts, we're probably just going to have to say, yeah, ground troops, you're on your own. Also, guys, the closest base is Guang. You mean to tell me that those two destroyers, as a result of not being able to engage due to distance to closest base, Guam is that far away from Saipan for them? Really? I find that highly unlikely. And no contact between fleets. No, I don't care to keep searching. They did bring the battleships. Okay, if we had... Oh, they ran away. Well, they didn't run away, but you know, they were heading away from us. And presumably they were originally... Yeah, they came down from here. If they had just kept their original heading, we should have just barely seen them. Potentially. Because you can actually see outside of this sighting range. So yeah, we ended up not being able to see them because they decided to turn all of a sudden. Oh well, that's fine. Battle's a draw. Michigan's finished a reconstruction. Intelligence is... Eh. The intelligence service is considering offering safe... No, 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 no. These revolutionaries can be as dangerous to us as the enemy. Lock them up and throw away the key. We are not going to help support a revolution in Germany. I believe I've mentioned in the past that certain countries have the ability to go fascist or communist as a result of a revolution. When those occur, you end up, or they end up with the ability to declare a war as a total war, which makes getting peace very difficult. Uh, torpedoes are faster and have more range, wonderful. Fighting continues in the Northern Marianas. Um, I've got money to spare, so no submarines. Let's. Oh, game game thinks my dreadnought's too old now. Really, it's like three years old as a design, right? Well, I guess in terms of actually being built, it's about like three years old. It, it was 30 months to build the damn thing. More like five years old, I guess. Uh, six. Okay. Close enough. So I can still build them, but again, the game thinks the design is old, and so, you know, they're not worth building anymore. So what do you recommend for a new red knot? Now, I like the triple turrets, thank you. But how about, you know, aft superimposed and forward superimposed? I can do that, right? Can, wonderful. Uh, do I want to do 15 inch guns? No, I don't. Um, how fast are some of these other knots out of curiosity. 21, 28, 17. Do 22. So we're a little bit faster than the fastest one that I have information on. Belts are... The French have... The French and the Russians have 11 inch belts. You have 13 inch guns, you have 11 inch guns. 13 inch guns can't pen 9.5. 11 inch guns can't pen 9. Well, 9.5 as well, we'll just say. Stick with our 14 inch guns. But we're gonna actually take you down to 10.5. I don't really need to worry about any of their other guns right now. Uh, oil, yes. Saves a little bit of space. 
or a little bit of weight rather. Since we need to make savings on our weight, we're going to drop the secondaries down to 2 inches. Give you actual secondaries, um, and they're going to be... S I'm, I don't recall if it's 5 or 6 inch guns that get it first. I think it's 5 followed by 6 and then 4 or something like that. It doesn't really matter that much. Uh, turret top, we're just gonna stick to two. I'm gonna drop the conning tower, or the, no, whoops, the conning tower down to ten. Actually, I'm gonna make the belt ten as well, I think. Nah, we'll just make the ship a little bit slower, that's fine. Could drop you down to 12. But that's not quite good enough. But no, no. You stay 14 inch guns. 14 inch guns are probably going to be the biggest guns we use. I don't see a reason for us to use anything larger than that in general. Um, luckily, this game doesn't reflect um, the logistics of needing to manage ships with varying um, calibers. But yeah, we're probably going to stick with 14 inch guns as our largest. As a general rule of thumb, can I make you guys and turrets? No, I can't. Okay. How many of these what can I fit before the game complains about? Okay, game won't complain about that. I can make you larger. To get what I need. Um mounted tertiaries and how many of these can I fit before you complain? Max of 40, so 16. Correct? Yep. Yeah. The ship a bit larger, there we go. 33 months for these and this is our first ship to actually have torpedo defenses on it. But those will be useful. Could make you a little bit smaller. That doesn't really affect anything significantly, so we'll keep you at 32,500, which is massive compared to these. We also have some of the biggest guns at 14 inches on par with the camber downs of the British, but we also have more armor. We're quite a bit faster. We do have more guns as well. 12 to their 14. And we can use all of ours in broadsides, while theirs of our. I'm pretty sure the camber downs are that weird four aft and then two wing turrets on each side. And they're not even um, on opposite portions of the ship, but like one, in, one towards the front and one towards the rear, so they can do cross deck fire. Pretty sure they're both in the exact same spot, so there's no cross-deck fire. So at most, they can only use... I don't recall, are they... They have ten of them. With four turrets. They must have a combination of dual and triple. The fore and after probably triples, with the, the wings being... Um, duals. The most, the absolute most they could ever use on me is eight guns. The gamber, uh, the uh, camper downs. Yeah, so this is going to be our new class, the Kentucky. That'll take four months to go through design and then 33 months to build any. That's fine. In the meantime, we'll just save money. Uh, another battle in support of land combat. This time I do have my destroyer here, or my dreadnought rather, uh, but they also have one of theirs. Well, supposedly it's a dreadnought. And I am actually going to be using it, so that is going to be a thing. My job is to sink transports. Oh, I'm assuming these transports are either bringing in new supplies, new troops, things like that. Will be my guess. I don't actually know if that is what in fact they are bringing in. 
but you know, this is... I'm the one attacking the Northern Marianas, and this is supposed to be a engagement in support of land combat, so... Presumably, what's happening here is that... That is them sending in... Oh, the Kentuckys, I lowered their speed to 21, didn't I? So they're going to be a little bit slower than the Wyoming's. I'll live. But I wish I had actually paid more attention to that. Like I said, I think I made them slower now. Okay, Armored Cruiser. Armored Cruiser. Oh, no. Excuse me. Armored Cruiser Destroyer. Now, I don't know if they are actually bringing their Dreadnought into this battle. The game gave me mine, so I'm assuming that they got theirs. But I don't know that for certain. You know, it's always possible that the game did not actually give them their Dreadnought. Which, if that's the case, that's fine. That's great for me. I'm going to use the light cruisers for taking out these tramps. Send the destroyers to the other side of the armored cruiser. Oh, seriously. Battleship, battleship. Okay, now we... Our info said nothing about battleships. Our info said stuff about dreadnoughts. Well, a dreadnought, rather. So, you know... Our spies are idiots. They saw something about a B and a B... The battleships, they saw two of those bees and they said, Oh, they must have a dreadnought. No, apparently they didn't have a dreadnought. They had two battleships. This is fine. The Minnesota should be able to destroy the Schlesen class here. Well, maybe not actually. Damn, 11 inches of belt armor? 10 inches of belt armor? The Minnesota can't pen that, can it? Not unless I close you into the 5,000 yards. Which, I mean, I can do. Nothing's stopping me from doing that. Yeah, uh, the Rally and the Olympia are just going to go straight north. And then they're going to cross in. I have the... well... I need multiple ways to take out those uh, battleships, you know, if we're going to get into a fight with them. And they are, wow, they are well within range, actually. San Diego is taking quite the beating. In fact, one of its turrets got destroyed. Forward turret has been destroyed. Yeah, San Diego, you are gonna just kind of off. So you guys can make smoke now. I'm pretty sure you guys have been updated to having oil, but the game doesn't mention anything about your engine here. Or at least what type it is, but I'm... Um, so yes, I think to make smoke you need to have oil. Which... Begs the question, to me at least, um, do diesel engines able to make smoke? Because that is another option that we'll be able to get later, is di diesel engines. Somebody fired a torpedo. Uh, the Pueblo's firing a torpedo, presumably at the Schlesen. God damn it, the rally has gotten confused. Yeah, okay, well, it looks like the Rose, Strett, Paul Jones, and Drayton are going to be the ones going after those transports. Um, let's get the Ama men out of there. By out of there, I mean I'm taking direct control and I'm sending you straight south at cruising speed, which is now 16 knots for you. 
Okay, but the Minnesota, which has oil, is not able to make smoke, so... I think that is limited to certain ship classes. Light cruisers and destroyers definitely can. Corvettes probably can as well. I don't know about armored cruisers. I think the Pueblo and the uh, Huron over here have not gotten their oil upgrades yet. But I could be wrong about that. We have set the Schlesen on fire. I kind of wish you would focus fire on the Deutschland now as a result, but whatever. Destroyers and light cruisers are some of the best ship classes in my experience. Well, not necessarily light cruisers, just cruisers in general, really. <clears throat> For uh, hunting down enemy transports. Now, Minnesota, focus your damn fire on the battleships. Forget the Hansa. The Hansa is irrelevant. Well, as far as you're concerned, the Hansa is irrelevant. I'll tell you guys to make smoke, just so that you are maybe a little bit less likely to get shot at. Or at least you're a little harder to hit. Especially by that Hansa that's on your rear. Oh shit, I didn't see those destroyers right there. The guys were just going right along, right next to an enemy destroyer. Whoops. Okay, well, the Schlesen's probably about to take a nice, juicy torpedo to the face. Need to sink how many is it? Six. Well, we'll definitely be sinking, like, all of them. Assuming they don't scatter too much. Lesson is hit. It's almost out of ammo. Well, it's down to 50% at least. It's not quite out of ammo. You have a sh shot on that Hansa. Go ahead and take it. Wonderful. Minnesota, you keep pursuing, but at a bit of an angle, so you can hopefully get all your guns firing on them. Uh, San Diego, I forgot about you. Lawrence, you're almost there. You're almost there, Lawrence. Almost. You might have a shot that I don't know how likely it is to hit but you do have a shot oh that probably should have hit really the Lawrence is the Lawrence is done it's probably gonna sink in just a moment I'm gonna tell it to break off I'm not gonna bother assuming direct control of it though and it let off its last torpedo at the Deutschland and it hit the Deutschland Great job. You happen to have a shot at any of these guys, you do. Take it at the Deutschland. Shot. I'll tell you to take it at the Deutschland again. Deutschland got hit, apparently, by that torpedo, despite the fact that it definitely looks like it whizzed right past you, but you know what? You do you. Take this one at the Schlesen. And then break off. We'll actually assume control of you, if you can manage to escape at all. 
want you to take it. The Schlesson got hit. Uh, where's the row and the other guys? There they are. Slow down, you guys have been damaged. Okay, go in there. Huron's gonna have to, or the hull rather, is gonna have to go out quite a bit before I can tell it to head south. So, Deutschland's taking quite a bit of damage. The game claims medium damage, but considering it's, you know, apparently traveling at a measly around about five knots, uh, safe bet that it's more than just medium damage. Stop firing on those guys. Focus on the battleships. Not a fan of those destroyers coming up for you, though, so I'm going to tell you to break off. Cross over with the armored cruisers. They don't look like they're coming for you quite. Oh, it's okay. San Diego, you keep your heading. I was trying to select the Minnesota. Let's see what happened to the Schlesen. Did it explode? But no, it's just, it's much further ahead than the Deutschland. You guys changed your formation. Also, you don't need to be doing smoke anymore. I kind of forgot about you. That's my bad. You can also stop making smoke, and I want you to head home. You're all on, you're all on your own now, so... In theory, the Lawrence might be salvageable. It's not quite sunk. If they can get their engine up, or, you know, I can finish the battle without it being officially considered sunk. They might, might, be able to continue fighting on after, you know, a month or two in the dry dock. Well, rather not necessarily dry dock, but, you know, ship repair facility in Guam or in the Philippines or something. We have some of their transports that are fleeing south. Actually, they all look to be fleeing south, so we're heading south now. The hull's going to continue what it's currently doing. Minnesota break off. Really, Deutschland? You managed to get just enough engine power to make a tight turn like that? Really? I need you to go after the Schlesen, Minnesota. Assuming they broke off, right? Yeah, they did. So you focus your fire on the Schlesen now. As you continue to ignore my orders to focus your fire on the Schlesen. <laughs> uh, Deutschland, outside of your arc for the Pueblo. Go. That's another hit. Be lots of flooding. Lawrence, do you have an engine? You, you do. You'll be limping home at a slow one knot, but it's better than not limping home at all, I suppose. Continue the chase on the Schlesen. Oh shit! The San Diego's on fire. Cruising speed. And claims the Schlesen is sinking, that's not entirely accurate. Where okay, there's the row and whatnot. And have you guys break off. I need you to try and get a torpedo in the Schlesen. 
The Deutschland, I can say with confidence, is probably going to be sinking. But I suppose I could give it another torpedo or two, you know, just as a, a parting gift to make sure. Uh, the Schlesen is taking hits. It is on fire. Minnesota does not have torpedoes because, you know... I designed the ship with the intent of not getting in close to enemies, and it has stopped dead in its track, so the Schlesen is going to sink. Change of plans! You now need to focus your fire on the armored cruisers down here. You can forget about the Schlesen for now. The Ro can drop a nice torpedo into it. Just to make sure that they don't fix the ship up. I need you to guys, yeah, come in on that side. Should have torpedoes on that side at least. Lawrence, you can get up to three knots now. You officially sunk six destroyer or uh, transports rather, not destroyers. I don't know where I was getting destroyers from. Minnesota, where are you? There you are. Oh yes, the San Diego is missing its forward gun. I forgot about that. Uh, the row is going to break off and night's falling now. I'm going to let the game control the row home. Not that big of a deal. Yep, night's falling, so they're probably going to manage to escape. Oh yes, I forgot. I was trying to launch another torpedo onto the Witchland here. Somebody fired a torpedo. Riley fired a torpedo at a transport that missed for the little reason that the transport's taken some hits now since you fired it and... Yeah. Okay. You guys need to switch to the other side of the Deutschland now, I think. Oh, no, 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 no. You don't. Deutschland took a torpedo from the Pueblo. Iran does not have a torpedo it can fire right now, apparently. Fine. I'd say with confidence the Deutschland is now going to be sinking because it's dead in the water. I say that, but you know, of course I have things like the Lawrence here that have managed to escape. while for all intents and purposes being dead in the water. But you know, it's highly unlikely that they'll be able to do what I was able to do with the Lawrence. It's more so just get lucky, but that's besides the point. Go down to cruising speed. You guys don't overtake them as quickly. Uh, San Diego, you keep heading in that direction. The Minnesota's gonna go with you. Those are gonna be the destroyers that you guys were shooting at before, but you are failing to identify them, so you're not shooting at them. Paul Jones, do you have a shot at that guy? Really? No? Because, I mean... I'd say you do. Well, the Drayton says he does, so Drayton, you take a shot. Stret says he has a shot at that guy. They both missed. That one sunk. Uh, the Huron is taking quite a bit of beating for you to go home. Cruising speed on the Pueblo. Yeah, we're failing to find the other guy down here. 
That's another transport. I'm gonna send the Pueblo back up to just try and check on the um Oh, that was the Deutschland up there if I recall correctly, right? Probably's found something, a destroyer. See, this is how good wars go in this game. All Jones doing. Paul Jones has gone AI controlled for some reason. Uh, I don't recall exactly where it was at the Pueblos, or the uh, Schlussen was up here. Or Deutschland, damn it, I keep getting them confused. It's somewhere up in this region. It just. I don't recall where the, any of the markers were relative to it, so I can figure it out. I'm 99% certain it has sunk, though. Or at least it will before this battle is officially over. Yeah, you guys just give up that chase. You're not succeeding. Also, it was probably heading more south, and I just kept telling you guys to go west. I mean, it's possible it's this unidentified ship, but I'm pretty sure it's not. Lawrence, up oh, your your max out at four. That's fine. Just don't get any flooding, and you will survive. Okay. Well, uh, I guess everybody gets to go home now at whatever speed you can make. Why the hell are you guys going that way? As if you're trying to go to the Philippines. Realize the Philippines is not the fastest route home, right? Like, head more or less straight south to Guam. I'm telling you guys to go to the wrong side of Guam, but still. Okay, the Pueblo is spotting something. Oh, it's a ship that hasn't sunk, is it? Yep, it's a transport that's not sunk. You out of ammo. Your bar, your forward gun. Slow down to a nice 10 knots. Come on. Now you want to shoot at it. Okay, there you go. I wasn't hearing you shooting at it though, so I don't know what your deal is there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you can't keep up with your division. We just wait for time to elapse and we win. So we sunk two battleships, uh, armored cruiser, three destroyers, and 17 of the 18 transports. One apparently did indeed manage to escape. Where is this one lucky one? That... Right here. Lucky mer... Ah, yeah, excuse me. <laughs> lucky merchant number 14. They managed to literally just escape through my net as I headed back home. Six thousand points for us, Battle of Iwo Jima, sure. That's what we'll call it, the Battle of Iwo Jima. Italy just gained us some score. Um, and yep, there we go. So Germany is being blockaded, so we gained 270 victory points for that. I'm assuming it's Italy blockading them. Yep. Because Germany has abandoned Northern Europe. They have four AMCs, so armored merchant carriers. Um, 
or well, just basically armored merchants rather. Um, and 24 Corvettes, which gives them a whopping 2 force power basically in the region. Uh, compared to that to Italy's 13 with just a battleship, an armored cruiser, and a destroyer. Yeah, that, that's not really doing them a whole hell of a lot of good. I don't know what Germany was thinking, basically abandoning their home uh, sea region. You, you don't do that. It's a terrible idea. Uh, three more turns for the Kentucky to be finished with its design study. That was my timer off, so I will see you all next time. But until then, goodbye and farewell.